Boom. What's happening guys? Today we're off to the coast to meet up with YouTuber Carlos. He shoots uh, mainly in the studio doing portraiture work. Just recently bought into the Fujifilm system. He's just got a X-T2. He also has two Canon 5D Mark III's. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. So let's go. Also, quick one. Uh, I just want to quickly apologize to the people that I couldn't meet up with on this trip. It's been an absolutely crazy trip. Uh, I was only here for a week and a half, so apologies that I couldn't actually meet up with you. I could only meet up with a few of you, but it's been great. I'm going to be back out again. I've had such a good time. I will be back again very, very soon. So, let's go. I've said it's snowing back in the UK. Oh man. So yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, so Carlos shoots Canon 5D Mark III and he's just got the Fujifilm X-T2. Yeah. I'm finding out all these people are starting to get Fuji. It's crazy. A yeah. lot of people are starting man, to switch. I love Fuji. Yeah. They just like... The experience. The experience is easy. Yeah. It's small. I, yeah. was, I was actually kind of hesitant to have big hands, but actually... Did you get the battery grip as well? Yeah, I had the oh, battery right. grip and... Uh, that makes a big difference. It's a big difference, definitely. For it feels me, like a proper... Camera like now. a proper camera yeah. and everything. For my wife, she loves that it's nice. Do you use the XT2 in the stuff. studio then, or not? Yeah, you, we actually, same here. Yeah, we switched it's fine, to isn't the. It? Yeah, look at that. I have the about the 5140. The 140 for the portraits too, you know. Yeah, and nice. I got the the 23, uh, the 23 1.4. It's just flat. Yeah. As you can see it's blue. Yeah. You it's, know, there's no. There's it no is blue, clouds. but it's a different kind of blue to what we get. Our blue never looks like it's blue. This is quite saturated blue. Yeah. Our blue is really like hazy and washed out. Yeah, yeah. So how, how often are you getting out? Is it like every weekend to shoot landscapes or? I t landscapes, I, I tend to do it more like as a getaway. Yeah. Because I just want to relax. Like and a meditation. Yeah, like a meditation yeah. type of thing. So I don't do much, but I do appreciate all the people kind of yeah. going out there. So you don't religiously go out every weekend? No. Like, okay. I, I, I'm, not, I'm the type of photographer who doesn't pick up a camera every weekend. Oh, okay. You know? It's just I casual. shoot with my wife just casually, but yeah. when I do it, I do it to kind of relax. relax. Yeah. We do it for business, yeah. but it's, I don't want to do it for that because I love photography yeah. and I actually, I want to keep it as a, as a hobby, as a hobby that yeah, I can yeah. enjoy and get away. That's true. So yeah, otherwise it becomes like a, a job. Exactly. And yeah. it's not bad of a job, you know, yeah. but it's just like any other job. You have to put in the hours, yeah. you have to put in the work. Yeah. And if you don't do it, you're going to feel like everybody else. And, yeah, exactly. And then, then your work starts to taper off. It starts exactly. to, you, your passion's not there. We've just got down to the ranch. This is where they shoot all the old Western films. Carlos said not many people really come here, so it's actually quite good to come down. So it's going to be very busy. Okay. So we got to be careful for rattlesnakes, you know. They just, even though it's not too far out from the trail where people walk, but yeah. they do tend to hang out in here. And we were doing a, a family session around here somewhere. Yeah. And then uh, we were walking by a tree in here, and there was just a rattlesnake just kind of coiled up right there. Yeah. And we were like, whoa, what's that? We have to tell everybody now that we come here. Yeah. Careful with the rattlesnakes. We're gonna walk in, we walk first and everything, but yeah. we do have to be careful for that, you know? So yeah, this is actually quite a harsh light right now. So the colors is gonna pop once the sun does start to kick down. Yeah, definitely. So. Pay attention to the light, guys. Listen yeah. to this guy. You know? Look at the, uh, I mean, you can see now, I mean, that still looks nice, but you can yeah. kind of see a, a slight hint of haze to it still. So. That's what a lot of photographers, like what I've seen, you know? Yeah. The, the difference that I see from other YouTube photographers and you, yeah. what I've seen in your videos is that you gotta, sp sometimes I see you hang out three hours. Yeah, yeah, shoot. yeah. And I don't think a lot of photographers have No, like, it's impatient. It's, it's impatient. the society that we live in right now. Everyone wants it now. All right, so look at this. That is amazing. Oh, it's warm. Yeah. Definitely bring some water out if you're coming out. Definitely bring some. We've got, I think I've got a gallon back at the car. Yeah, I got plenty of water yeah. in the barn just to make, every time I go out to places like this, yeah. I just bring extra water. Start walking a little bit, five, 10 minutes and yeah. water. Even though it's not that hot, it's probably like, what, like 70, 75 degrees? It's a lot cooler out here than it is back in, um, in the city. It's about yeah. 90 in the city. So 
you do get a bit of a breeze out here, but it's still blisteringly warm. Yeah. And I'm gonna be in Scotland next weekend. It's gonna be like <laughs> minus <laughs> two, minus three. So it's gonna be freezing. Yeah, I'll be, yeah. I'll be crying probably. <laughs> Just right. talk to people and yeah, yeah. So we've just we're just looking at compositions now and perspective. So here we don't really want to see the path, which is just down there. You guys might be able to see the path. So, but as soon as you lower yourself down, we like that. We're gonna we're gonna go for that. We think because the light's coming from just over that hill. So this is all gonna be golden, golden yellow, very very soon. So uh, it's just a matter of just quickly going from there, shooting over there, because that looks amazing as well. These yellows here. Okay. You can use graduated filters. Yeah. Over there when yeah, the sun yeah. comes down and everything. Soft grad just to hold it down. Yeah. yeah. This is a massive oak tree. Look at the size of this thing. Old. Yeah. Looks really old. This whole, this whole forest team thing is yeah. full of oaks, I think. That one too is pretty massive. Alright, so let's head back then and uh, get our gear. So, when do you want to eat? You want to eat after? You want to eat? Let's eat after. This is one of the actual shots we're going to be looking at composition wise. It's an old church. I just want to see what it looks like with this. This might be make a good foreground interest. Yeah. That is going to look so nice at sunset. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah. So you either take that or you push forward and just do the church. It might be a bit more simpler, mightn't it? Yeah, I think it'll be just... A bit too much with the, with the bridge, like that. a little bit on the way. Yeah. You probably have to be really high to kind of get that. Yeah, to get, to get this aspect, the, uh, the perspective. Now I just got bitten by a bug. <laughs> For people who are familiar with the, the kind of shots in Westworld, you know, this yeah. is kind of the church and the, they did the cemetery just a little bit right yeah. here to the right. So and what, show, what show is that? Westworld. Okay. On HBO. All right. Yeah, that's pretty big actually. A lot of people, a lot of fans and everything. Yeah. So that looks, that's so simple that. I think yeah. that's an oak tree next to there. Yeah. Even like right here too. That's what I mean. It looks really, really good. Yeah. I think I'm probably going to go for that, I think. But the only thing is that that shadow there is going to yeah, it's gonna elongate. It. It, might it might block it. So you might want to shoot that pretty soon because look how close that shadow is. Look. Yep. That would probably be the first thing I do and get that lot after. Yeah. yeah. yeah I need to find out whether this scene right now is it going to be within my sensor's range. So obviously I turn on my meter. Um, what am I shooting at? F wise. I'm at F11. I'm at F11 on here. Uh, 100 ISO. So whip out my Lumosphere. And I take an ambient meter reading. So there'll be a specular highlight. So the light falling here will be the same there. And that shadow is getting very, very close to the building. So see that highlight there. If I take a meter reading there, look, it's one sixth of a second. Yeah, because of the specular highlight. Now if I cover up the um, specular highlight with my finger, where is it? There. See that highlight going? There. Mm -hmm. And take it, it's now eightieth of a second. So if I had just gone out there and went bam, that would have skewed my whole exposure. Okay. So just use your finger, cover just cover that. You can kind of see it when you, yeah. can you see it? The specular highlight? Yeah, yeah. I see it from, from yeah. this angles right here. Yeah, yeah. From your angles probably. Yeah, so then I, okay, that's my ambient meter reading. So I can now put that into my mid. Mm -hmm. And I'd obviously, I'd type that into my camera now just because I'm, because so, um, I don't forget. So eight of a second. I'd then switch over and then see them little dots on the bottom of that's the exposure mm -hmm. that's my dynamic range of my gfx's sensor okay so the the first dot is just the clipping range okay. the the dot on the outside is its max you after that the other side of that dot mm -hmm. there's no detail you've lost it in all the whites and obviously in all the blacks and the minus yeah. so i'd look at the scene i'd be like what's the, what do you think the brightest thing is in that scene is Probably like a part of this house on the yellows. Yeah, like I, I'd say the, the highlight. I'll check it. And what you can do is you hold your finger down uh -huh. and it will give you a separate reading within the viewfinder as you go. Oh, you can have a go on it. I'll let you have a go. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding it down now. I'm getting 800 on the side of the building, mm -hmm. 640. If I look at the sky, what am I getting? 400. So yeah, that, that, that highlight on the side of the building mm -hmm. is brighter than the sky. So do that again to have a quick look see i'm right on the max see mm -hmm. it's plus three yeah it, i could get it in one shot without no filters and not lose data so i can now put that into memory so i mm -hmm. press the button there it's locked it in darkest thing probably the shadow underneath the oak so i'd look through there a one degree spot you want the lowest number now and i'm getting 40th mm -hmm. so the difference between this, the, the highlights and the shadows is, mm -hmm. you can count, look, one, two, three, four stops. Okay. 
and then you put that into memory. So I know my sensor, the GFX, medium format, can capture this scene, one exposure, at what time of the day is it? Three, uh, like four o'clock? Four thirty. Yeah, I mean, it's still really hot out. Yeah. So as, obviously as the sun goes down throughout the day, every hour obviously the light's going to be changing. Good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you'd open up a stop at a time, so three clicks down, you'd open up the scene um, as the light. See, this is the thing I was trying to explain in the, in the desert the other day. Um, I would rather, because the medium format has great ISO, like the, the ISO range is so great, you can shoot like 6,500, 7,000 and the, there's no grain, there's no noise. Mm -hmm. And if there is noise, it's very, very smooth, the noise. So I'd rather sacrifice a higher ISO image because like, you can get rid of that in post mm -hmm. than um, s open up the, sh the shutter and have a blurry image. So that's what I'd normally do. I'd rather one, change one variable than the, other, mm -hmm. than the other variable. So I'd just change the ISO variable. So when you, after you get your reading, yeah. for example, you're shooting this F11 right yeah. on your camera. Yeah. So you don't have to mess around with the camera anymore. I've locked that, um, the first meeting we got, I put that into the camera and I've locked it in, that's it. You locked it in, so yeah. that's what I said. But the, the other two readings are then just... Then the reading tells you... Just tells you, is it within the range of one shot? And if it's not, then you modify You can you modify it, exactly. the camera exactly. or whatever. Yeah. Or you wait another hour and there'll be a difference in light. That's kind of like a trick, I guess. I, yeah. guess. I was missing and everything, but... So you set up your camera, you yeah. want to shoot it, whatever you, I guess you say, I want to shoot it at F11, yeah, because yeah. I want to capture all of that. Yeah. And then you come with your reading assist. Yeah. Can See, I most, most people will be like, oh, let's quickly chuck a filter on, but they don't know if they need a filter. Yeah. A lot of people have been saying, do you need to use a light meter? Not all the time. In high contrast scenes, yes, and snowy white scenes, because mm -hmm. the camera doesn't, can't see that. Yeah. It's like our eyes are constantly in HDR mode. We can see that in one scene, but cameras struggle. So you don't have to use a light meter, yes. Um, but I do, just because it's out of habit, and we work, obviously we both shoot in the studio, so it's just habit for me. But another thing is, you can't, you can't, you can't guess the difference between the shadow and the highlight. Yeah, yeah. Only a light meter can do that. The camera can't do that. Yeah, I think if people who actually gave the light meter a chance, they wouldn't live without it. That's the, what I'm finding. All the videos I'm doing, yeah. you know, meeting Joe, Ian, uh, Sahaj Powell yesterday, and all the guys in America and stuff that I'm talking to, if you just gave a light meter, just buy the cheap version for now, yeah. and just seriously get on with it. But so, it does save time. Yeah, because to be honest with you, I'm not I'm not familiar with the bracketing and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I guess with that, you don't have to worry about whether your camera. Not not every scene. Yeah, not every scene. Yeah, not every scene determines like needs to be bracketed. Yeah. But everybody goes in on oh, five, five. Then you've got more processing to do. Yeah. More work. I guess now the XC2 has nine, nine. Yeah. Samples, yeah. Like, that's a lot. I mean, I, I, my idea is I want to be out more shooting. I don't want to be post processing at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the light meter just speeds up my process. I'm going to quickly get this image. Cause the light's changing very quick. Do you manual focus? Yeah, I'm, I'm always manually focusing. And obviously as it's mirrorless, you know, you've just got the XC2, so I can punch in, punch in with the zoom button, just check. Mm -hmm. That's it, so I'm done. Mm -hmm. Two images and I think I've got it. Yeah. So, but if you looked at the JPEG, you're not about to see it on there, but I suppose if you look at the JPEG, it would be going absolutely uh, crazy right now. Yeah. So yeah. have, a, have a go on that, see what you think. So if I turn it off. So this is Carlos's uh, first time. Let me come around there so I can see you. First time using a light meter with a spot, one degree spot meter. Yeah. Let's see. So yeah, so you tight yeah, you dial in your aperture and you're fine. So you have to yeah. turn you have to turn this back over, that was my oh. bad, my bad. There you go. Right, so yeah, so that speckle highlight you can see on the dome, the lumosphere. Yeah. So if we shoot it, if we take a look at it, it's yeah. at 125. Yeah. But and if you, you then move, just move right? that, yeah. 80. There you go. So, so, so now you put that into your yeah you put that into your camera. Mm -hmm. That's not going to change. That will change yeah. as the light dips. Correct. I'm going to put it on on T since I don't have the 80. And he goes okay. from 66 to 125, so I'll do it manually. So now go. you press mid. Okay. Mid tone, and that locks it in. That's your mid exposure. All right. You then switch the dial over to spot, and then you can when you look through there, you're about to see the difference. So obviously, I've look at the, the highlight. Can you see inside the screen? It's going to be bright still. Yeah, it's still bright. But I'm looking at the mid tones. 125. The sky. The sky isn't as bright, is it? Yeah. It's that highlight that's screwing it. Yeah, the, it's a 400. Yeah. And then the side of the building is a 1000. Exactly. So, yeah. The, the shadow. So you're looking for the highest number. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the highest number will be the side of the house, which is yeah. a 1000. Yeah. You know, F11 1000. The sky is a 400. 400. So. It'll be basically the side of the house is yeah. So you put that into memory, uh, the memory button's there. All right. Press that. Got it. And then you look for the shadow. 
then again it'll still be probably be that oak tree yeah, yeah. and basically uh one turn it over second and try and get that glare out yeah yeah so yeah so basically, and you can see that's well within the range exactly so you just put that into memory then you know would it warrant a filter what type of filter you could count on there how many stops of you need what type of filter you need mm. one two three four stops so it makes it, it just saves so much time yeah yeah definitely that makes it right, cool to, i just wanted to learn exactly yeah. Because it's, yeah. But yeah one thing is actually seeing a video and the other one is actually practicing but oh it's, it's totally different doing it for real it's so much and you're going to get quicker and quicker oh, you yeah. literally i mean look how quick i you saw i put my bag down within two minutes i was shooting and i took two shots two. that was it yeah, you can take reading, 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 yeah. memory, memory, and you're out. Yeah, you're in and you're out. Location, yeah. Don't waste any time. No. Not five, uh, five shots for bracket is yeah. way it's too much. And it didn't, didn't warrant HDR, five shots. It didn't need three shots. Yeah. Unless it was out of the range. Exactly. Or, but exactly. then you've got the option. If it was out of range, you could bring the highlights down two stops, three stops. Yeah. Even then, even then you still don't need the HDR. The camera, but it would have and then it'd be, it'd be shot there. right in camera first time. One image to process back at home, not four, five, six. It's I don't think I've ever seen any landscape photographers actually use a, la a light meter. I'm going to ask my professor because I don't think he, ever, he even uses that, a light meter. How did you just know? guess it? I think, I think he just knows. Yeah. You know, he's been doing it for so many years that yeah. he just knows and everything. And, uh, and most of it, I'm guessing, is guesswork. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking a lot of yeah. people, that's what they do. That's what they do. They, I mean, you could, you could wing it, I think, and just guess it. I mean, there have been a lot yeah. of people saying, oh, could you not just use a light meter in the camera? I keep saying it. Yes, you can. Yeah. You can. But this is just... Good practice for me. Just because we now shoot digital doesn't mean we should throw out all the old school things, the way of doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my belief. It's easier. You make your work easier. That's yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. Make your job easier. Enjoy more of the landscape, yeah. the photography yeah. and everything. And it slows you down. I think that's what a lot of people don't want to do. Yeah. Slow down. Slow down. Just enjoy yeah. it being here. You know, the, you know, experience this. This is, this is beautiful. Yeah. This is You're beautiful. out in nature. As you said earlier on the car, it's like meditation coming out. A lot of people... Shoot. You can shoot multiple locations yeah. instead of just one, one. with the, right there, unless yeah. it's really one the one location, yeah. but like, we're going to shoot a Yeah, because we knew that that shadow within an hour would be crawling up the side of the building. Look at it. Okay. Look, because we knew the sun was going to set over there. So we knew from scouting around, we went for a quick scout, yep. 20, 30 minute walk or whatever. It was a hike. That's quite nice up there. I like that. Yeah. That's really nice. But yeah, we knew from just from reading light that that's going to start creeping up the side of the building. Mo Some people might have gone to that first one, the second location first. We thought, nope, we've got to shoot here. Now we go to the next one, because now we've got, still got time. So let's crack on to the next location. So Carlos has asked, just picked up my new tripod and asked how much weight it was. It is a lot of money, I know. I understand it's a lot of money to spend on a tripod. But if you're out shooting every week or every other weekend and stuff, your gear, I'd rather spend, what's that saying? Uh, pay cheap. Pay twice? Pay twice, it? yeah. Pay cheap, pay twice. And that's what I was doing. I was buying a lot of cheaper, non-branded tripods. And it just kept breaking, kept getting rusting, kept getting stuck, legs. So I thought, no, I'm going to invest in a really right stuff tripod. I bought the TVC33. I was amazed by that. Got that shipped to the UK. Obviously, I've come out here for this trip to get this. And it just so happens that Carlos is free today and we're out shooting. But yeah, I actually came out just to get this. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing light. You can take... I'll do a video of it when I get home. But for maintenance, you can undo the legs. Because I asked them about if you get the wet, sand, yeah, you get sand, sand in, water. In, I've also got the uh, extension, the spikes as well from Really Right Stuff. So I'll be, I'll be doing a review of it when I get back. I think it's an amazing. You can see how light it is. It's just crazy how light it is. Yeah, it's it's super light. Like it doesn't even feel like you're carrying anything. Yeah, that's what I mean, and it can hold a lot of weight. A lot of the other ones are light, but they can't hold a GFX or yeah. a Sony or Maybe a Canon. Maybe that's why a lot of people haven't really considered. Well, I did a video. It should be uploaded now. Yeah, it's past tense. I, I did a video on the really right, so I asked the guys what makes their tripod so good. Oh, there you go. Uh -huh. What makes their tripod so good? And they um, said it's because it, the, for the size of the tubing, yeah. it can actually hold a lot more. Should I try? Yeah, try. Yeah, so what they said was uh, it can actually hold a lot more weight than a, a non-standard. Well, the, the same tripod equivalent, it can hold a lot more weight per leg. Mm -hmm. um, that video should be online by now because this is like the week after. So. Yeah, yeah. Go back and watch that if you wanted to watch the really right stuff tripod um, video. But yeah, it's, I've been blown away by it. That's why I've stuck with them. They obviously gave, they gave me some free feet as well. One of my feet fell off of my other one. Yeah, yeah. You'd think you'd have to pay for that. Oh, they yeah. gave me four brand new feet Man. for free. Yeah, it's customer service. I know it's an investment, but the customer service, you can't knock. Yeah. That's one of the things that I haven't really considered. Yeah. That, that if a tripod will actually 
hold the GFX. There you go. You know? Yeah, you can't, but you can't. And even your computer, you yeah, need, obviously, yeah. you can't, if you're working on a teeny tiny computer, a MacBook Pro, you're going to be now dealing with much larger files. Yeah, yeah. So you don't just go and buy a medium format camera, you've got to look at your whole system. The whole system your backup right. system, because obviously you don't want to lose your work if you're going away traveling. Um, your tripods might have to be uprated, your computer might have to be uprated. It's a, it's a real big investment, really. Yeah, yeah. But the rewards are there. I mean, I'm blown. You know, I'm you know, I'm blown away by it. So this is super light, man. I, oh, it's I crazy. To be how but this is just up the road from you. I mean, this is like yeah. it took me <laughs> like an 11 hour flight, a four and a half hour drive to go to this place. But it's well worth it. Yeah. The video will be up. You can see it. It's a, it's a ranch in the middle of a field, and that's their headquarters. Yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful bag. It's yeah, just I mean, nuts. It's just... I'll show you the feet. I got the feet in here. Look, I bought them. The spikes. So when I'm out on the sand or the ice, you screw them on and just boof, stab it into the floor. Man, it's some high quality stuff. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. Ah, oh, I can't, I can't fault them. They're an amazing company, great customer service. And you don't get that with a lot of stuff nowadays. Yeah. The customer service just is like, is like second, you know, after the, after the fact, they just want your money. I've, I've used really right stuff now for four years and still looking after me yeah. from that one tripod that I bought. All right, we're on to the next location.